26 to 30. Okay. Yung first video, 26 to 30, let's read. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Beautiful, beautiful verses. So let's start. Thoughts, questions, comments on the first video? Ano ang um, main uh, verse doon? Anong, anong, what, what, ano, what struck your mind uh, pag-discuss doon? Ito ang koan. In our weakness, the Holy Spirit helps us. Oo. What about Yan it? Yan yung parang naka-struck sa akin. Koan, okay. uh, yeah, Mike, yeah, may, may tanong lang ako. Mm-hmm. Kung ito, in the moment na nagka, may nagagawa tayong palpak ba? Yung mga, uh-huh. sa pa, mga kasalanan. Uh-huh. Yung presence ni yung, yung presence ng God umaalis ba or pumipikit na lang <laughs> um, when you say the presence of God iba-iba interpretation doon if you are talking to a typical Pentecostal okay not all Pentecostal but the big majority of Pentecostal is that the Holy Spirit basically departs that means you can lose your salvation okay yun ang typical stand ng um, uh, Pentecostal that is why they always have on a, almost a weekly basis to come forward and receive the Lord. So, but not just the Baptist, but in particular, just a believer, a Christian. Ako, I would not even say this is the Baptist stand. This is just a Christian stand. That, uh, as I mentioned in the video, so next video actually, more, more specifically, once saved, always saved, as long as you are truly saved. Okay. Yun ang condition, that you are truly saved. Uh, so, pag nagkasala tayo, does the Holy Spirit present leave us? No. Because the Holy Spirit presence in us, in us, sa loob natin, is permanent. He is the deposit, the Bible says. The Lord is, he is a deposit guaranteeing our salvation. Okay ba yun, Ting? I mean, is it satisfactory ang answer or... Meron ka pang gusto mag-clarify doon? Uh, okay, uh, okay man lang. Kumbaga, by the way, yung yung stand mo ko yung Mike, once, di ba yung last na video, once yeah. save, always save na. Uh-huh. So, ito naman yung meron lang akong tanong, party dito regarding sa sa 1st John 5. Mm-hmm. Yung sabi dito, if, if you see another brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, mm-hmm. you should pray. Ano ba itong sinasabi dito na does not lead to death? Let me see here. Uh, tignan natin. Anong text? Sa 1 John, John 5.16. 1 John 5.16. 1 John 5.16? Opo. Okay, why don't we start with verse 13? I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray, for, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those sins. Okay. I refer to those I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. Um, let me see. Hindi ko napag-aralan pa to, okay? 
but we know anyone born of God does not continue to sin. Okay, so what sin is this? Uh, initial lang, ah. initial lang thing. I, I, I need to have a deep study. But um, the sin here, all wrong with, okay, no, so no, verse 15, tamo? 16. If you see anybody or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. Uh, I don't want to jump to conclusion thing. Hindi ko pa napag-aralan to. So, I do not know. I'll, I'll just say for now, for the time being, I do not know. Okay? Ano ba ang context na to? Chapter, faith in the incarnate Son of God. Everyone who believes that the, those who are in Christ, born of God, overcomes the world. He is the one who came water and blood. For there are the spirit of blah, blah, blah. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts his testimony, and this testimony God has given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. Okay, so there's the life portion. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. Whoever has a Son has life. Whoever doesn't have the Son of God does not have life. So that's the context about eternal life. Okay, I write these things to you that you might know that you have eternal life. There you go again, the context. It's about eternal life. And if you don't hear us, whatever, blah, blah, blah. if you see any brother or sister commit a sin, does that does not lead to death? If you see any brother or sister, you know, thing, hindi ko maano. I need to do my research, commentaries, and uh, word definition and so on. I cannot okay, answer po. that right now. Okay? Eh, yun din po yung ini-study ko kayo. <laughs> yeah. Sige lang, meron pa man, meron pa man next ano. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, hindi ko alam to. Uh, I need to go deeper on this. Okay, <laughs> and by the way, here's the lesson we can learn. In your Bible studies, okay, when may mga question that you do not know, do not try to sa palagay ko, sa tingin ko, and so on. Just say, for the time being, you don't know. And then make a thorough study. Then you present it, whatever you find out. Okay? So don't be afraid to say, hindi ko alam na next time, and so on and so forth. Papag-alaran ko muna. Yes, boy. Uh, binasa ko dito sa comment ni John MacArthur sa kanyang mm -hmm. uh, MacArthur Study Bible sa 1 John 15. Uh, ang sabi ni MacArthur, uh, the writer is just making a distinction uh, that a sin that leads to physical death and oh. those sin that does not lead to physical death. Yun ang kanyang explanation. Okay. All right. But we had to double check MacArthur if he is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course. Oh, that po, is his po. comment. Uh -oh. yeah. All right. So let's get back to our text. In so Romans in the meantime, ganun lang muna tayo. Ganun lang muna. Yeah. Sin that does not lead to physical death and sin that okay. leads to physical death. Yeah. Okay. All right. Salamat, boy. Okay. There is a sin that leads to physical death, like when you commit suicide. Yeah? That's sin. Right? Yeah. Uh, physical death talaga. Physical death talaga. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or you, let's, let's get or, back to Romans 8. Okay, bakit tayo lumayo ng Romans 8? We're talking okay, about po. Romans 8. Okay. Any more thoughts on Romans 8? Ang tanong ko, napanood nyo ba yung video ng Romans 8? Okay. Yeah. Did everybody oh, po, po. Po. Oh, Malalim ang Romans 8. Okay? Malalim ang Romans 8. So, any thoughts on that? Let me go back to our text. Romans 8.26. Okay. Any thoughts, comments on this? Yung sa, kung kuya Mike, yung sa my verse 30, napakaganda. Yung saan? Yung sa? Uh, sa verse 30 ba? Sa verse 30. 30? Okay. Sa so next video yun. Next, ano, <laughs> dito muna tayo sa first video. 26. Uh, ano tayo? 26 to 30? Yung first video? Ah, tama, tama. First, vi first video pala yung ano. Tama yung 30 <laughs> okay. na yan. Um, and uh, those he present, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those justified, he also glorified. Okay? And by uh, the way, this is the stepping stone to verse 31 that says that there, we are more than conquerors and that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's why we say that once saved, always saved, if you are truly saved. Kaya may condition, if you are truly saved. The problem kasi many times is that we presume that a person is saved, but they are not saved. 
So, sino sabi? Yung Ping? question. Ano, ano ang... Okay. Ray, 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 So, sa tatlong ganit, tingnan ko yung mga notes ko. Kung baga yung sa akin, kung ano lang, Kuya Mike, na kung baga maganda lang, na cold, justified, and then glorified. Uh-huh. Yung, so, yung explanation mo sa sa video 33. Uh-huh. Ano lang ako, uh, okay. na... Okay. Kung baga sabi nga na natouch lang. <laughs> yeah. Now, remember, yung predestination in chapter 9, iba ang description. Later on, we will see that God actually have elected us. That's the word used sa chapter 9. Pre-election. Pero itong sa chapter 8, itong predestination does not speak about election. This is simply saying na itong predestination natin is according to verse 28 that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's the complete sentence. Kasi pag binasa mo lang, and those He predestined, it will sound like, okay, those He elected uh, before time. Yes, we will talk about that, but later on in chapter 9. Right now, itong predestination is we are predestined to be conformed in the image of His Son. Who are those people who are confirmed to be in the image of His Son? Those whom He foreknew. Okay? So, Mike, mayroon akong... Mike. Yes, boy. Sa so verse 26. 26. Uh, 26. Uh, ano ang context ng sinasabi dito na wordless groan yung... Yeah. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us through... Wordless, wordless groans. Ano ba yan? How do how do you, how do you imagine what are those wordless groans? Well, to begin, groan. Groan means is to seek for, to look forward to. Okay, I'm groaning, uh, you know, for something to happen. That's that, that's the word groan. So let's take a look. Number one, in the same way. That, that's the context. So there mm-hmm. is a pre, uh, tato, pre statement that has been mentioned. That is now being compared to the spirit's groaning. Ano ba yung in the same way? Well, in the same way, the two things. Number one is the whole creation has been groaning. That's the first one. That means this old earth right now. Remember, this earth right now is a cursed world. The universe we are in right now is a cursed universe since after Adam and Eve were thrown out of Eden. This is a cursed world. So, Paul is saying this world is looking forward to the new creation, to the new heavens and new earth. So the earth, the creation is groaning as pains of childbirth, uh, childbirth right up to the present time. So they are looking forward to. Not only so, what is that? Not only creation is the one looking forward to, but we ourselves who have the first of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption to sonship. The redemption of our bodies. So this adoption to sonship is not the, um, you know, if anyone is in Christ. Uh, sorry, sorry. So first, so John chapter one, uh, to those who receive him, he gave him the right to become children of God. This particular adoption is a adoption wherein we get our glorified body. That is what we are longing for. That is what we are groaning for. Okay, that's the second groaning. The first groaning is the creation to be a new heavens and new earth. The second groaning is for the believers who understand what they what they have in Christ. That when Christ returns, they will have a glorified body. Then 26, in the same way. So again, that is the flow of the conversation. The Spirit also helps us in our weakness. We do not know what to ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through. Wordless groans, wordless longing for. What is he longing for? Well, the context is the creation for the new heavens and new earth, the people of God for their glorified body. Number three, the Spirit helping us while we are in this old body and intercedes for us in our weaknesses for the time when we are fully glorified. 
That is what the, the spirit is longing for. So not only are the, is the world longing for that uh, perfect time, not only are we looking for the Maranatha when the Lord comes, but even God himself is looking forward to that day. So akala na kasi natin, tayo lang yung, no, Lord, balik ka na. In reality, even God says, gusto ko nang bumalik. I'm looking forward to that. He is groaning. He wants to be with us in His fullness. Yes, He lives in us. He is with us. But the, the completion of it is in Revelation 22, Revelation 20, when God will make His abode with man. He will live with man in this new earth, new heavens, walk with man, make His residence with us. That's the groaning. I thought it was related to the first part of the sentence when we say, we do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Correct. Hindi ba sila related na, yes, we do they, not they know what very... to pray, yes. we do not know what to pray, but it is the Spirit who will intercede, but Correct. wordless groans. Correct. But so, you see, we always have to put it in the context. It is true that we don't know to pray for many other things. We don't know how to pray for our business, for our relationship, for our... Uh, uh, you know, uh, difficulties, our challenges. We do not know what to pray for. But in the context, in particular, we do not know what to pray for in relationship to our inheritance of the adoption to become a child of God. That is what we don't know to pray for. We don't know how to relate the things that is... Remember, itong passage na to is all about suffering. Okay, That because we are in Christ, verse 18... I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing. So when we pray, particularly in the area of suffering, challenges, and uh, persecution, many times we don't know what to pray for. As a matter of fact, the, the moment we have any challenge or problem or persecution, the first thing we pray for, Lord, alisin mo na to. That's our first prayer. When in reality, that is not necessarily what God wants. That is why it says here, um, we do not know what to pray for in our suffering. Okay? And then even the creation, it speaks here about being liberated because even the creation is technically suffering right now in its condemned state. It's still looking forward to be brought into freedom okay? and the glory of the children of God. So this is something that we need to look forward to. Pero tayo, when we pray, oftentimes it's it's self. Ano bang word? Um, ano lang ba? For self satisfaction, malis na problema. When is self directed? Related, ano ano? Self directed. Self directed. We really do not consider na probably it's it's God's working. Alam mo ba na pag nakakaroon ng problema, it's not always because. Uh, 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 by the way, meron ako mga Christianong alam. Pag may problema or or sakit or anything. Ay, demonyo na yan. Lagi na lang ang demonyo. Did you know that many things that comes to our life, even though they are seemingly bad, are actually given by God? You see, kaya, that is why the Holy Spirit, dito boy, ano ba yung text na yan? Ano yung 26. 26. 26. We do not know what to pray for, but, okay, that's on the other hand, on the contrary, when the Spirit, if I may paraphrase this, when the Spirit prays, the Spirit intercedes, that's pray for us, to word this groans, and He searches our hearts. Remember, and that means continuation. He searches our hearts, knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people. Here's a key word. Words. In accordance with the will of God. What is the comparison? The comparison is this, that many times you and I pray not in accordance with the will of God. That's why the Holy Spirit is groaning, uh, looking forward when we are made perfect. Because when we are made perfect with our glorified body boy, we will always pray, talk to God in the will of God. Right now, when we pray, it's self-centered, it's selfish, it is uh, incomplete, uh, it is lacking of information. And na yun, yung mga bagay na ganun. Very good. <sighs> yeah.
Kaya nga, that's why we say, no, our salvation is not yet complete. Yes, if we truly have repented, if we truly have put our faith in Jesus, we are saved. But that is the initial salvation. And the initial salvation is that we are given the Holy Spirit. But we are not given yet everything that the Lord has prepared for those who are in Him. The majority of the things that we will receive is still in the future. Including, dito sa text na to, our glorified bodies. Continuation, Mike. Continuation. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and he who mm-hmm. searches our hearts mm-hmm. knows the mind of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is rather parang contradictory, confusing because mm-hmm. God knows our heart. So why would He search our hearts if He already know what's in our heart? Well, this is human uh, speaking because He's speaking to man. He's not speaking to Himself. He's speaking to us to make us understand that He knows our hearts. The intentions of our hearts. Kaya nga, that is why in the context again, when we pray, oftentimes it is not in accordance with the will of God. How does He know that? Because He knows our hearts. He knows the intention of our heart. Lord, pinag-pray ko na si Pacquiao manalo. Eh, dahil Pilipino ka. Pero kung Mexicano ka, you are praying, Lord, sana manalo si whoever, yung Mexican fighter. You see, many times we pray for... Ano, ano eh? Uh, very selfish actually ang prayers natin. Whatever. Yeah, Mike, my... Uh-oh. my... Yes, eh. May message si ano si Kuya Rico. Oh, meron ba? Ma- Hindi ko nabasa pa. Hold on. Meron message niya. Okay. Uh, please explain further verse 28 as it is often times used but the uh, discussion in the videos has a much deeper meaning interpretation. Should we use it in the manner we oftentimes we hear that expressed by many? Okay. Ano? Okay. Uh, Rick, pupunta tayo dyan pero gusto ko lang tapusin yung yung ano yung, yung uh, gusto ay clarify ni Boboy okay so boy any more on this uh, searches the heart he, he knows yeah. the intention of our hearts more than just the words that comes out of our prayer he knows really the intention of the heart okay so when we say lord pinaki-pray ko si ganun para gumaling na okay that's fine pero the lord will probably say but that is not my intention as a matter of fact ako nagpadala ng sakit Okay. So, but is it wrong to pray? Of course not. Because God knows that we are imperfect. He knows that. That is why the Holy Spirit, I love this one, but the Spirit Himself, you can simply put this, God Himself intercedes for us. So even though we are praying on the external, but God Himself in us is praying for us. Isn't that wonderful? Hindi, hindi ko nga kailangan, technically, uh, yung sabi ko, uh, boy, dad, pakipray, please, ganun, ganun. Well, the reality is, God Himself is praying for me. And in these two verses, He says it two times. Again, the Spirit intercedes for God's people. Not just for me, but the whole group of people who are in Christ. God Himself, the third person, the Holy Spirit, intercedes for them. Right now, He is interceding and praying for you, boy, for me, for Titing, for Sherwin, for Joel, for Rick, for all of us. God himself is interceding. Okay? With groaning. Groaning, wordless. Yung, you, you, groaning is another word for seriousness. Seriousness. And his prayers are always bullseye. Always to the point. Always ito sinabi two times, in accordance to God's will. Now, what can be better than that? A prayer from God to God in accordance to His will. Okay. Pero ang tanong ngayon, ngayon, ngayon siguro boy, is will be, uh, then why, why does God tell us to pray if many times we are praying not in the will of God? Very good question. Okay. Um, it is because he wants us to. He commands us to. That, that's the only reason. So, but it doesn't mean that when we pray, it's always bullseye. 
That is why we want to know more and more the Word of God because the more we know the Word of God, the more in line our prayers will be to the will of God. The more we are ignorant about the words of God, the, the, the greater the possibility that our prayers are not in accordance with the will of God. Make sense, Bayon? Hmm. Okay. So, verse 28, ang um, tanong ni Rico. Uh, ano ba yung ulit yun? Please explain for your brethren. All things. As it is oftentimes used by the discussion of videos, much should we use it in the same manner? We oftentimes, we hear that expressed by many. Okay, by many, uh, I think a lot of people quote this verse and say, kaya, merong nangyari, I don't know, nawala ng trabaho, for example. Um, and then we quote this verse, oh, you know, God will work for good for those who love him. Now, somehow, all things, uh, that bad situation will turn out to be good. Okay? That is correct, uh, Rick. Pero gusto ko lang ma-emphasize, uh, that is the kumbaga, secondary application. Because the primary application is always the context. And like I mentioned, the context dito is when us Christians, we face persecution. Verse 18. Yun ang, that is the beginning. I consider that our present suffering, what is the present suffering? Our lifetime suffering, itong buhay natin are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed, revealed in us. And so what he was saying in verse 28, ano ba yun? 28, so in the end, whatever happens to us, even those that are sufferings, those are bad things, they will turn out for the good of those who love him. And the good here, as we know, is not necessarily na nawala ng trabaho, nagkaroon ng mas magandang trabaho. No, not necessarily. Because the good here is God's good. And God's good is for us to be conformed in the image of His Son. Uh, where is that? Verse 39. Okay? That He predestined us to be conformed in the image of His Son. In other words, the suffering that we are going through, if we permit that suffering to really work in our lives, it will result for us to become more and more in the image of His Son. Okay? So, yung uh, typical application ng mga tao ngayon, you know, God work for good, yeah, that, that's, that's okay. Pero, ano yung secondary lang yun. I'll, I'll say that's a secondary application. The primary application is the bad things, the sufferings, the persecutions that God permits and God uh, uh, brings to, a, to His child ultimately is in the is for the purpose of conforming us to the image of his son. That is the whole purpose. Acceptable by yon, Rick? Uh, okay, po. Okay. All right. Yes, Dan. Yeah. This uh, so twenty nine for those God for you, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His son. That's our that is our sanctification process, diba? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The process of becoming Christ-like. Correct. So, exactly. And that is why in verse 30, uh, ito ang procedure. Predestination, calling, justification, and then ultimately glorification. That is the final. Okay. So, so sanctification. That is the essence of uh, 28. Yun ang, Correct. Uh, yeah. Yung yeah. end um, result. The end result. result that all things work for the good, that the sufferings that you and I will uh, that, that we are going through will make us more and more like Jesus. The troubles that you and I are going through will will um, again. Ito lagi ang ano? Ito lagi ang result uh, to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's always the purpose. That is the good that happens in verse twenty-eight. That all these things. And by the way, it is not only the bad things, even the good things, all things, God works for the good. And what is that good? To the conformity of His Son. To whom will this happen? To those who love Him. And who are those who love Him? To those who called by God. To those who are called by God. Diba, Mike, sabi sa John, 
the one who loves me is the one who obey my who obeys my commands. Right? Correct. Yeah. Yun, yun ang measure. Yung measure ng love natin, those who love him, ang true measure na yung obedience. Correct. And uh, obedience, not just in the obedience of, you know, I do the, the, the Ten Commandments. Because the ultimate thing that uh, we need to obey is His command for us to repent and put our faith in Christ. Okay. Any more? So, ulitin ko, okay? Itong predestined dito sa verse 8 is not predestined equal to the election of God. We will talk about the election of God in chapter 9. Ang predestination dito sa chapter 28 is the predestination of those God for new to be conformed in the image of His Son. That's the complete sentence. So, we are predestined. That means every believer, every believer is predestined to become uh, conformed to the image of the Son of God. That is our future. That is where we are headed. Right now, we are, we are being sanctified. Another way of putting it, that we are being conformed to the image of His Son. More and more and more and more. And the climax would be when the Lord returns, when He gives us our immortal bodies, our glorified bodies. Clear on that? Kasi yung election will come chapter 9. Itong chapter 8, hindi pa to election. Okay? Itong word to destination is just about what we will become. This is what we are predestined to become. And by the way, I think I also mentioned a video that um, there are certain groups of religious organizations that they will say that we will become God, particularly the Mormons. That this is the verse that they will use that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that we will become like Jesus. In other words, we will, we will become God. That is not what He's saying. Okay? It is not, because it will contradict all of the, the, the doctrines of Scriptures, where Jesus is deity and we are creation. So what, is, what does it mean to be uh, conformed to the image of His Son? That is, in the context, the body. That Jesus, who is the first fruit, who has the human body, and right now, by the way, in heaven, in paradise, the second paradise right now, he is with a human body, a perfect body. And one day, you and I will be like him. That is why we can see him face to face. Any more thoughts? Joel? Ray? Mike, yes. pinatay ko lang video ko ha, kumakain. Ah, sige, 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 go ahead. Anong, ano mo? Okay, well, okay, okay, Kuya Mike, sa akin. Uh, ah, sige. Sorry, I wanted to validate yung uh, prediction and election ba? So, you answered it now. Ah. No need to, ano? Okay, yeah. Yung election, Ray, the whole of chapter 9, we will talk about the election of God. Yung ibang, ibang definition ng election, okay? Kasi paminsan, we use the word predestined equals election. No. Predestination in chapter 8 is different terminology than the word election sa chapter 9. Right now sa chapter 8, we are only predestined, we are planned to become okay, uh, in the image of His Son. Yun ang predestination natin. For those God for new. Any more? Sherwin? And ito, Kuya Mike, tinipe ko kay yung question ko. Ah, may tinipe ka ba? Oo. Uh, ano? And ito, enter ko na. Ah, okay. Sige, sige. Enter mo na. Ayan, uh, diba? Okay. Kasi, in ano weakness, kasi? In weakness kasi of paper. Kasi doon sa, ano, Kuya Mike, sa verse 26 kasi, di ba, tayo, we pray for our weaknesses. Oo. Uh -huh. Tapos, siyempre, para tayo ma-change, ma-renew yung mind natin, ma-transform Correct. tayo. Correct. Tapos, yung spirit naman, nag-intercede na naman sa atin. Correct. Para, ano, that we may be able to do the will of God. Pero until now, palpak pa rin tayo. 
<laughs> okay. So you basahin ko tong binabasahin ko tong type mo. In weakness we pray for God's help that we may be able to re- be renewed, changed and transformed. The spirit himself intercedes for us that we may be able to do the will of God. Okay. So uh, ang question mo is Pero until now, nagkakamali pa rin tayo. Until now, Sherwin, are you are you here? Are you present when we spoke about <laughs> chapter 7? What you are uh, feeling uh, ang feeling mo Sherwin is the feeling of the apostle Paul. Sabihin ko lang sabi niya sa English, what a wretched man I am. That is exactly what you are feeling right now. The 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 discontentment, the uh yung uh ano bang tag to? The um the word yung frustration. frustration frustration there you go that the frustration of wanting to do the will of god and yet you find yourself many times doing the exact opposite you are exactly ang feeling ni paul sa chapter 7 what a wretched man i am i want to do what is good what is right and yet i do exactly the opposite sherwin that is a very good indication that you are in Christ. Because if there is no conflict, then that means you are in line with the world. The mere fact that we are aware that meron tayong mga ginagawa na hindi, hindi in line with God is a very good indication. And by the way, that is a motivation for us to go down to our knees and pray. Lord, ito na naman ako. Kapalpakan na naman. That is why even the Holy Spirit prays for us. Why does He pray for us? Because, you know, uh, verse 26, the Spirit helps us where? In our strength? No, in our weakness. That means God Himself knows that we are weak. We are weak not in the physical strength. Na ay, mahina ako. No, weakness in doing His will. So God Himself knows. So, ito, ito ang encouragement ko sa iyo, Sherwin. If God understands that you are weak and that many times you're not able to do His will, you should also be forgiving of yourself. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean na you put your guards down na ay, weak talaga ako. No. That should bring us going back to God and keep on hanging on to God to hold on to Him. That's why your next video Okay, that, there, that nothing can separate us from the love of God is a confirmation for those of us who are feeling exactly what you are feeling, Sherwin. As a matter of fact, a, a Christian who does not feel that he is, uh, he is uh, what do you call this? Um, um, he is weak, that he is not doing all the will of God. Kung merong taong ganun na Christian, sabi niya, there's a problem. That means there is no conflict. He thinks that he is perfect. This is the whole point. We are not perfect. We are being made into the image of Christ. It doesn't say we are made in the image of Christ. No. To be conformed, that's future tense. And the climax of that, the pinnacle of our being conformed to the image of Christ is when we receive our glorified body. That's the context. So praise God, Sherwin, that you are feeling that way. You should even thank God. Lord, thank you. Now, you know, I, I am discerning na marami akong pagkukulang, na marami akong uh, shortcomings. That is the whole point. Okay? So it's not a bad thing. It is a good thing. That is why later on, Paul, it is in verse 31, he makes a conclusion. What then shall we say in response to all of this? So, you see that? So, anong sabihin natin ngayon? Sherwin, what, what are we going to conclude? that we are weak in our bodies, that the Spirit is praying for us because many times our prayer is not in line with the will of God, but the Spirit's prayer is always bullseye. So what should we conclude? What then shall we say in response to all of this? What is the answer? If God is for us, who can be against us? That is a rhetorical question because the the obvious answer is nothing can be against us. Not the devil, not our environment, not our problems, not our persecution, not even ourself. Not even Sherwin can go against Sherwin. Not even Mike.
can go against my nothing. Who can be against us? Why? If God is for us. He's the ultimate. What can go, go above God? Nothing. So in other words, anything or anyone who will try to go, who will try to go against God will never win. And the word if here is not saying na kung si Lord na sayo. No, this word here, if, in, in the context, is saying since God is for us, who can be against us? And then he proves it by stating the fact, the reality. He, that's God, who did not spare his own son. What's that? That he gave his most precious son, begotten son. His, I mean, what can be more precious than giving his own son? Okay, He did not hold his, spare his own son, but gave up for us all. He gave his son. Ito ang, ito ang ano, irony. How will he not also, along with him, graciously gives us all things. Kung binigay niya yung anak niya, which is the most precious thing, why in the world will he hold back the salvation that he has given you? That's the whole point. Now, will there be things that will try to go against it? Of course. But here again, it's a rhetorical question. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Very beautiful. Here's now at the beginning of the doctrine of the election of God. Listen to this carefully. I, I'm giving the introduction to the election of God. Who will bring any charge? Who will go against those whom God what has chosen? Question. Who chose us? God chose us. God chose us. But earlier in verse 20... What's that? Uh, verse 29, for those God foreknew. And the word foreknew here is God knows the end from the beginning. He knows what choices we will make. God foreknew. But dito, sa verse 31, uh, 32, 32, ano ba yun? God gave you up for God chose us. What I can say is what this we can have the spirit of somebody gave up for us along with English give us all things who will be any charge. 33, okay. Mike, 33. Yeah, 33. Okay. Whom God has chosen. So this is now, again, like I said, the introduction to the election, which will be fully developed in chapter 9. Yes, it is true that God foreknew your choice and my choice even before the creation of the world, to belong to him. He knows that we will call upon Christ. He knows that we will re repent of our sin. But all at the same time, God is the one who has chosen us. And Paul is making an argument, Tito. Because God has chosen you, and not you choosing God, then who can be against you? Ang Diyos ang pumili sa iyo. Maganda sa Galag to eh. Ang Diyos ang pumili sa iyo. No, sino ang pwedeng kumontra doon? You see? Uh, kumbaga, God is the one holding you. It is not us holding on God. If we are depending on our grip to hold on God, nako, very undependable yan. Madaling mag-loosen yan. But in this, in this case, God is the one holding us. And if God is the one holding us, who can be against us? Anong obvious answer? Nobody. Nothing can go against it. Nothing can snatch us away from the hands of God. See the book of John? Nothing can, nothing can snatch us away. And then later on, shall death or hell or angels, the future, nothing can separate us from the, from the love of God. Why? Ito pa. God is the one who chose us. It is God who justifies it is not you and I. It is not our workings that will make us justified before God. It is God who justifies us. So again, who can go against that? God is the one who proclaimed. Si Ray, si Joel, si Rico, si Sherwin, si Boboy, si Titing, si Mike, si Danny. 
are justified in Christ. Now, who can go against that? Which lawyer in this whole universe can go against that? Of course, the answer is nada. Nobody. That's why, verse 34, hindi pa klaro, again, para nasa korte to. Okay, si Boboy knows this very well, para nasa korte to. Who then is the one who condemns? Sino pwede mag-condemn? On the decision that God made. Because God is the one who chose us, it is God who justifies us, then who can condemn? Very simple. No one. Wala. Okay, Mike, question? Yes, yes Ray. Uh, okay, Mike, two questions. Uh, first, mm-hmm. with, with regarding this verse, ba, how, how can you relate this on the text coming from Matthew 24, verse 13? Which says? Which says about the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So uh-huh. as you are saying, it is God who secures our... Okay. Matthew 24, salvation. Salvation. Matthew 24, 24, verse 13. Pa. Okay. 13. Mm. Okay. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So, anong interpretation mo dito? Like, it, 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 the way I see it, it, it still stands based on how, you, how far you can endure. Wrong. What is he saying? That people who are truly in Christ will stand firm to the end. And those who will stand firm to the end are the people who are saved. Because those who will not stand firm to the end are people who does not belong to us. It's not saying that we are striving to keep on standing until the end. The whole statement here is that those who will stand until the end are those people who are truly in Him. If you connect this to 1 John chapter 2, the reason why they left is that they never belong to us. But those who will last until the end are truly those who are in Christ. And they are only the ones who will be saved. Walang uh, iwanan. Ano no? The, the, Walang the, iwanan. The, the, the ano lang ito, Mike, is are you sure if you're the one? Yes, I'm very sure. Those. Because it is conformity to all other scriptures. And let's take a look at the... Okay. Then you'll be handed over the persecuted and put to death. Okay? Who are these? The believers. The context here are the believers. You, the believers, will be handed over to be persecuted and to be put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. Again, the context is the believers. The believers uh, will be hated, will be persecuted, will be put to death. Okay? At that time, many will turn away from their faith and will betray and hate each other. Now, who are these people? Are these people the same people who, who are persecuted and put to death? No. These are people who are claiming to have faith, but their true colors will come out. They will betray each other. Because those who are truly in the, in the faith are willing to go all the way to death and are willing to be hated and are, we, are, and are willing to be persecuted. But those who are not truly in the faith, they will deny uh, and turn away from their faith and will betray each other. And then, and see here, look at the continuation. And many false prophets. So, you see this? False prophets? So, what, what is this saying? That these people who turned away, itong turned away from their faith, are faith, uh, are, are faith, are false believers. False believers and false prophets are, you know, what is... Um, what do you call this? Uh, dominant in these days. And will appear and deceive many people, these false prophets. Or another way of saying, false teachers. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who will stand firm in the end will be saved. So who are these who will stand firm to the end? Those who are willing to be handed over, to be persecuted, to be put to death, to be hated by all nations because of me. You see the context? So those who will last until the end, Ray, are people who are willing to die because of Christ. They are willing to be persecuted because of Christ. They are those who are truly in Christ. Those who are, quote-unquote, Christians by name, they will depart and reject Christ. 
Yeah, that's, that's they the are, point. They are the uh, modern uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah, kuya, ang point lang kuya, it's, it, mm -hmm. well, it's true that, that this text clearly defines who the real Christians are. But the, 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 the measurement or the, the way things are being revealed is we if we go through that I don't know, on that specific uh, what you call this situation but yeah, that's okay, oh, yeah. Later, um, Ray, okay not all of us will be persecuted and be put to death because of our faith uh, in Corinthians it says um, um, okay, uh, there is no temptation given unto man for which he cannot stand and if he feels that he is trapped, God will also provide a way out, which means, Ray, that the persecution and the challenges of your faith, of your true faith in Christ, will be permitted to come to your life only in the limit that God knows you can handle. Okay? So, because uh, right now, we may say, Naku, pag may puma, puma dito sa bahay, tapos tinutok sa akin ng barel sa ulo ko, Will you still trust in God or not? Well, the truth of the matter is God knows, you know, he's provident. So he knows everything. So when that thing happens, if you are truly in Christ, he knows that you can handle it. And scripture says, and if he knows that you cannot handle it, he will also provide a way out. Again, we just have to hang on to that promise. And there are many people around the world maybe not in the Philippines, maybe not in the U.S., who are being handed over to be persecuted and even put to death and even hated because they are in Christ. And those who will last, who will stand firm to the end, is the proof that they are in Christ and they are the ones who will be saved. This is not speaking about your, your effort to keep on uh, standing firm. No, it's a saying, a statement, that if you are in Christ, you will stand firm to the end. Can it also mean, Mike, that to the end is the end of your physical life? Correct. Or to the end of the persecution. Yes. You will stand firm. You will stand like, firm. Like, an example, Mosi, Shadlak, Meshach, Abednego. Yeah. Uh, ang end lang kanilang persecution was that when after they were released, di ba? Yeah. But they were standing firm. They didn't necessarily die. Kaya, we can thank God for problems because it's a good indication that we are truly in Christ if you stand firm. They're a very, very good indication. Yeah, Mike. That, uh -uh. that, is, that, is, the, that is the million dollar question. Why... Uh, for for many, so why why would a person be tested to that kind of persecution, suffering, uh, mm -hmm. if only to prove his faith in God? Not only to prove, but to conform us to his image. Because the more we are uh, exposed to problems, persecution, and trouble, the more we rely on God, the more we trust God, the more we become like his son, Jesus. So it's not just to prove, oh, talagang Krishna ko. That's only one area. The other area, which is far more important, is John. Uh, sorry, Romans chapter eight, is for the purpose of conforming us to His image. We become more and more like Jesus, who even for a short time in His whole life here on earth is being persecuted and ultimately put to death. Okay, so our view of persecution and problem will no longer be. Ay, naku problema. No. We now will pray to the, to the Lord. Lord, please, uh, to, to the Father. Father, if you would, please take this cup away. But not my will, your will be done. But would you consider it a foolish act for a person to volunteer to die because he wants to prove he's a Christian? <laughs> yeah, I think that's foolish. <laughs> that is foolish. I will go there so that I will be killed so that I will have glorified money. <laughs> Yeah. Mike, yeah. second question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, first question. Pa lang yun. Oh, first first question. Question. Okay. Sige. okay. So going back to our text, Kuya Mike, uh, earlier, we, we, you did mention in the video ba about uh, our, our, what you call this, 
association with God as being our father. Now, we we, we understand that as far as treat as far as our relationship with God as being our father, there are situations that we don't know how we, how we truly address him as a father because we have different experiences of being of having fathers. We have mm-hmm. fathers who are not good and fathers who are bad. Mm-hmm. So in, in that context, we might uh, what is really the way we should address God as being a father? Because considering uh, uh, it is uh, a gen- it's an intimate relationship, so should we like there are moments it's like we have a good father. Our ch- our approach to that father is dad, please give me ganito, give me ganyan because. You know, for a fact that this is the kind of father that you have. Now, in relation to this time, in spiritual matter, how do we address God in a very manner easy, right? Very easy. Uh, Study the Word of God, because the more we know the Word of God, the more we will understand who our Father is. For example, hayo pa nga mga tao na ang experience nila with their physical father is you know uh, Santa Claus, because everything they ask for is given to them. Let's presume na yun ang idea mo of a father. But when you study the scriptures, the Bible will says that our father is different. He does not love us because he will give us every petition we ask of him. That's not true. So again, the more, the more we know the word of God, the more we will understand who our father is. Again, we go to Mark 12, which I showed to you last time. Verse 24. Jesus replied, are you not in error? And if I may apply it to your situation, Ray, are you not in error about who our father is? Because you do not know what the Bible, the scriptures is saying about our father. That's the problem. We make presumption of who our father is. So the more we know the word of God, the more we will understand who our father is. Like when Jesus says, Father, if it's possible to take away this cup in, in the context Pwede bang hindi ako ma, 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 ano, ma, ma crucify But Father, not my will, your will be done. So he understands that the Father's will is far greater, more important, more precise than his personal desire. Pero tayo, oftentimes when we ask of our Father, physical Father, lalo na kung ano tayo, kung uh, spoiled children tayo, we expect that Father to give us what we ask for. Kung mahal mo talaga ako, dad, ito ibibigay mo sa akin. See? That's a wrong concept. That is why we continually, kaya pa ni Danny kanina, grow in our sanctification. And part of the sanctification is not just doing the will of God, but more importantly, knowing who our God is. That's part of sanctification. Knowing who God is. Why is that the reason why there are many preachers who would uh, accept the view, the human view of God as the Father, as the way Ray explains the the the, con- the concept of a father, the, the human father. That's why many are in trouble because of that concept. Is that Correct. the reason why we are in trouble? Correct. They're not understanding who our Father is. You are very right. Binigyan nila ng full equivalent of a human father. Human. But the human father is very simple. The human father is very imperfect. That is not a comparison. The whole idea of God the Father is just giving us the idea and the understanding of our relationship with him. That we are now his children. But it does not point out that he being God our father is in any way similar to our physical father. Not at all. Napakalayo. Napakalayo. It only speaks about that relationship that we are now in the family of God. That's that's the same thing in 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 law, Mike. If we study law, Mm-mm. and you are to describe what does it mean to be in good faith or to do what is right, you say the law says you have to follow the good father of a family. And sometimes a student says, "I cannot follow the the principle of the good father in the family because my father in the family is not good." <laughs> <laughs> And not only that, no father is good in the standard of God. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, That's... no father is perfect. Kaya, uh, Ray, um, the, whole, the whole purpose of Bible study is to understand who our God is. 
who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, what is his ministry in us, and so on and so forth. Like today, we understand that the Holy Spirit, who is God, living in us, is interceding for us. We don't even have to ask for it. He is now interceding for us. So Sherwin, sabi mo kanina, yung struggles mo. Right now, at this very moment, the Holy Spirit is praying for you. Pero sabi mo, eh bakit ganun pa rin? Let me tell you this. Without Amen the Holy to Spirit, that, Sherwin. Amen to that, Sherwin. Amen. Okay. E- eto pa, Sherwin. Let me put this this way. If you think you are frustrated that you are not obe- obeying the will of God, despite the Holy Spirit praying for you, imagine if the Holy Spirit is not praying for you. You will be in a far worse situation. Nakuha mo yun? Okay? So yes, we can be, we can be frustrated. Naku, ito na naman. What a wretched man I am. But it's true. Despite the Holy Spirit praying for us. Now imagine if He's not praying for us. Baka hindi lang, baka lang, hindi lang last full thoughts. Baka nagkababae ka na doon, dalawang anak mo, tatlong anak mo sa labas. You see? It could have been worse, a lot worse. And the Lord understands that because we are weak. But He's saying to us, but the day will come. The day will come when all of this will be made pure, will be made perfect. Kanta yun, may kanta. May kanta yun. Our day will come. Uh, Mike, can you relate this to the verse in Matthew 17? Uh, Matthew 7 verse 11. Matthew ano? Matthew 7 verse 11. Matthew 7. Verse 11? Yes, yes. Verse 11. Sana yan? Okay. Uh, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gift to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gift to those who ask him? Correct. So again, but you have to put in the, into con- consideration what is the good? Because the good of the physical father is giving gift. Bigay ng laruan, bigay ng mga, you know, uh, paputa ng Disneyland, that is the good. But the father's good is totally different. It's not about satisfying what you want. His good is that he will do things and permit things to come into our life to make us more into the image of his son. You see, yun ang problema natin. When we think about good, ay, okay, uh, ang tatay ko, binigyan ako ng, ano, ng laruan na ano, matchbox na kotse. Pero God will give me a real car. No, that is not the good. The good has always to do with our eternity on who we are to become. Kaya ang Krisyano, pag nagkaroon ng mga problema sa buhay, akala ko ba si Lord, mahal niya ako? Akala ko ba ang tatay ko, ang father ko, uh, will give me good gift? Bakit hanggang ngayon, pobre ako, walang nangyayari sa buhay ko? Why? They have a wrong concept of God. They have a wrong concept of love. They have a wrong concept of good gift. Okay? Kumanta na kanina sa Kuya Bumboy, naputol ah. Oh, sige, continue yung kanta. Ano yung karaoke mo, boy? Sige. <laughs> May kanta yung Our Day Will Come. Oh, paano? Sige, kanta, kanta. Yeah. Our Day Will Come. Ganun lang yun. <laughs> Bitin mo. <laughs> you know, uh, ako yung, Share na lang day. pag, pag face to face natin. Meron tayo kinakata dati sa TBC. Uh, very old uh, song. Begun. Yun! Begun. Exactly. A good Yun ang gusto ko sabihin. He yeah. who begun a good work in, in you. That's Philippians 1. So, <laughs> that, that is the whole point. That the good work that God is doing in us is to complete us, to bring us into completion. The full adoption of our salvation. That is the good that God is trying to do in us. Hindi na bibigyan tayo ng bagong kotse, bagong bahay, bagong negosyo. Uy, Lord, God is good. No. We can thank God even in the bad things that happen to us. Because for a believer, sa totoong Krisyano, lahat na nangyayari, no exception, will help us and will bring us to become 
more and more to the image of Christ. Okay, let's read 31. Tapos natin ito, Magarto. Um, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave up for us all, how will not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Oh, kaganda nito. Sino ba? Sino? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Nothing can, no one can condemn us. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God. And, ito pa, Christ is also interceding for us. So the two persons of the triune God, the Holy Spirit and the Son, Jesus, are both interceding for us. 35. Who shall, who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Rhetorical question. Anong sagot? Nothing. No one. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Nothing. No one. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. In other words, our security in our salvation is totally locked up. It cannot be taken away. Because it is God who justifies. Because it is God who has chosen us. So no persecution, no hardship, no famine. In other words, a true Christian, a real, true, born again, redeemed, justified, transferred the kingdom of light to the family of God, person can go through hardship, troubles, famine, nakedness, even death, sword, none of those can separate us from our relationship with God. Then Paul says here, for your sake we face death. All day long we are considered a ship to be slaughtered. Speaking about Christians, we are people who are facing death all day long. But no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors who love us. Now, in what context is this that we are more than conquerors? We are more than conquerors because nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can take away our salvation because it is God who justifies. It is God who has chosen us. That is why we say to those who are truly in Christ, once saved, always saved, not because of you and I, but because of Him. Verse 38. For I am convinced, kumbisado talaga ako, sigurado ako, for sure ito, that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor, ito pa, nor anything in all creation, inubusin na lahat, pinakyaw niya na, in, and, nor anything in all creation, ano, none of this, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beautiful, beautiful uh, conclusion of Romans 8. Now, I don't know, uh, you know, if, if, I pang ni Sherwin kanina, if you feel Sherwin, uh, you know, you feel disappointed, you want to do the will of God, but you're not able to do that. Guess Sherwin, that cannot separate you from the love of God. Remember, not our love to God. It is the love of God. Okay? It is going downwards from God to us for the love of God. It does not depend on our love for God. Because tayo, ano tayo eh? Um, ni Dani kanina, if you truly love me, you obey me. But many times, we disobey him. So at that point when we disobey him, we love what we did more than God. But praise God that our salvation is not based on that. Our salvation is based on the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see that? You see the foundation of Christianity? Now, if you are still in a person who is doubtful of your salvation, okay lang, be doubtful. Because it is important to be really sure that you are truly in Christ. Because if you are doubtful, that means you are still trusting yourself. You still don't know the love of God. You still don't understand uh, the salvation of God, the justification of God. But, Mike, mm-hmm. examine yourself. I, I, I know. Examine yourself. Yeah. 2 Corinthians, no? 13.5. Examine yourself to see if you're truly in the faith. 
So it's okay to doubt now. Doubt as much as possible. So tayo kasi we always want to say to the people, lalo yung mga small group, ah, nag-pray ka na ng prayer. Uy, you are truly a child of God. As a matter of fact, you don't want to do that. You want them to doubt. Are you truly in Christ? Totoo ba talaga? Because if you're truly in Christ, then that is the most important thing. Yun ang, pinaka- yun ang core ng Christianity. It is not to be a good father and a good businessman. Secondary lahat yun. The, the, the core of Christianity is the assurance of salvation that our sins have been paid for. Bayad na. Yun ang the most important. Everything else is far second. Far second. Joel, tahimika. Wala kang audio. Wala kang audio. Mike, para may question lang, kanina Mike. si Sherwin. Uh, natabunan si Sherwin kanina. May, may question kanina ah, si Sherwin. We, we will get back to Sherwin. Uh, Joel, continue Joel. Okay lang. Nakikinig lang, Mike. Okay. Claro. So, uh, meron ka bang feeling para si Sherwin na paminsan you feel like Apostle Paul, what a wretched man I am. Ayoko man loko, pero niloko ko siya. Ayoko magsinungaling, pero nagsinungaling ako. Do you feel that way? Okay. Of there, course, there's... it's always a challenge. Always a challenge. And oh, that, yeah. is, that is a reason to motivate us to draw closer to God. Because kahit yung mga problema na yung Joel, ultimately, will work for the good. Will make us more like Christ. But because... one thing I noticed, Mike, uh-uh. parang merong, merong ano ba, uh, na hindi mo, uh, yes, the temptation is there, but there's also a strong conviction na hindi mo siya gagawin. Pero yeah. minsan, Mm-mm. parang merong, merong umahatag ba na hindi, hindi ka tumuloy doon. Yeah. That is what, what I noticed. Yeah, you will always have a conflict. The, uh, the, the, the perfect you, the new man, the new creation, and the old body the sinful body. There will always be conflict. That is why it says there, in our weakness. God knows we are weak. God and knows and he's also providing a way out. Correct. He'll provide a way out. And hopefully, we will take that way out. Okay. okay uh, let's go to Sherwin. Uh, may tinayip si Sherwin dito. Ah, yung kanina, uh, yun, kanina yun, in weakness. Okay. So Sherwin, ano yung gusto mong natabunan na question kanina? Ano po, Kuya Mike, um, di ba, no one can separate us na Mm-mm. and we praise God for that. Mm-mm. So, kanina, may siner kasi si Kuya Ray regarding sa Matthew ano, 24. Oo. So, yung, yung ano doon is, kasi di ba, tayo, hindi naman always that we are on fire in the Lord. Di ba mm-hmm. po? Mm-hmm. Oo. So, Um, ano ba yung sinabi doon na ano ba yung classing attitude or classing life na sinasabing um, stand firm? Okay. Uh, oh, kasi, Ray, anong, anong, anong chapter ulit yun? Anong chapter yun? Chapter 24 po. 24, 13 ba yun? 13, 13, 13. Okay. 24, 13. Okay. Uh, 24, 13. Let me oh, ask you this question. Uh, Let me ask you this Before we answer that. But you stands firm. Correct. But let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Matthew 24. Ano ang context ng Matthew 24? Um, sinabi mo kanina ko yung Mike regarding sa those who are really a believer mm-hmm. and then Pero those who are... Ano yung situation? Matthew 24. Who can, who can tell me? Matthew 24. Sino may alam? Paparang nag-upis sa yung questions na yun. The question is What will happen in the end times? Matthew 24 speaks about the time of tribulation when there will be such great tribulation and persecution and the death of many of those who are in Christ. So those in the time of tribulation, in particular, okay, of course we can apply it sa ating buhay ngayon. But particularly, Matthew 24 is the tribulation time. That in those days, you cannot buy or sell without the mark of the beast. The only way for you Uh, to be able to uh, survive, if I may use the term, is to submit to the beast. So those who will not will be persecuted, will be hated, 
and will be put to death. But those who will persevere to the end will be saved. In other words, their, their allegiance is truly in Christ. Because ang, ang dynamics ng uh, Matthew 24 is totally different than our time today. In those days, the Christians will be taken out of this world. Remember? We are out of this world. The rapture have happened. They will be left behind. And those who will be left behind, there will still be salvation. People will still come to know the Lord. Because there is the 144,000 uh, missionary Jews. And there are the two witnesses who will preach to the whole world. So there will still be people who will come to know the Lord. Pero ang kabayaran at that point in time, for those who will submit to be in Christ, is persecution and death. And so what the Lord says here, but those who will truly submit to me will last to the end. No persecution, no death will stop them or hinder them from, from turning around and saying, I surrender na ako. No, they will still say, I am willing to die uh, even to be, by the way, Revelation says that at that time, heads will be chopped off in the time of Revelation to those who are submissive to Christ. So they are saying that I am willing to die because my allegiance is in Christ, even if it costs me my life. So that is the immediate context of Matthew 24. So let's bring it outside that tribulation. Sa atin ngayon. Uh, remember sa uh, what do you call this? Uh, doctrines of doctrines of grace. Na, na, natuto ko na ba dito? Dan, boy? Alala nyo ba? The doctrines of grace, yung tulip? Na, natuto ko na ba dito? Uh, total depravity, unlimited uh-huh. atonement. Part of the doctrines of grace, Sherwin, ang letter P sa TULIP, okay, yung uh, uh, acronym ng TULIP, ang letter P is Perseverance of the Saint. That terminology, Perseverance of the Saint, that the truly people who are God's people, the saints, will persevere until the end. That is what it means to persevere, perseverance of the saints. That truly those who are in Christ, siguro mayroon siya up and down in his walk in the Lord, but ultimately will persevere until the end. On the contrary, in the parable of the sower, the second soil and the third soil rejoice for a little while, and then they left. They are truly not in Christ. But those who are in Christ will persevere until the end. Kaya uh, sabi ko to sa video, no? um, um, it is a lot easier, oh no, it is far better to presume na ang isang tao who have quote-unquote backslide, okay, di ba? we use that terminology, ah, nag-backslide si so-and-so. It is better to presume that he is not truly in Christ and then later on find out na he is in Christ than to presume that he is in Christ and then later on find out that he is not. Make sense ba yun? Yung statement na yun? Kasi tayo, pag, pag meron so-called active na krisyano and then later on na, na napunta sa mundo, ay, nag-backslide. That is one presumption, which is possible. But I'd rather prefer and choose na the reason why he has he started living in the world because he never really is a Christian. He never persevered. He probably is a Pero second soil. I don't know. Lang yan, Kuya Mike. Hindi tayo, kasi kung isabihin natin, parang judgmental naman tayo. Correct. Of course. We will not, say that, we will not say that verbally, of course. Pero at the back of our mind, we need to think that way. Bakit? There are several advantages. Number one, it is really possible that he's still on his way to hell. That's possibility. Number two, because we are thinking that way, our objective is not just to bring him back to church and to be active again. Our objective is to explain the gospel. You see? Kasi oftentimes, akala natin, dahil active sa church, Christiano. That's not true. That is why Matthew 7 says, many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did I not teach Bible study? Did I not attend worship service? Did I not sing a song? What did the Lord say? I never knew you. Hindi ka kilala. Sino ka? Alis ka dito, no? I never knew you. You evildoer, may dagdag pa eh. Hindi lang away from me. Away from me, you evildoer. Grabe yun. These are people who are presuming that they are in Christ. 
Now, tayo as leaders, more importantly, we should not presume that everybody in our Bible study are in Christ. That is a big mistake. Okay. So, ano ang mga proof that they are in Christ, truly in Christ? Well, the love of the love of the Word of God. If there's no love for the Word of God, there's a problem. How can a person say, I love God, but doesn't have interest in the Word of God? Number two, he loves to fellowship with other believers, with like-minded believers, true believers. Number three, his lifestyle is a lifestyle of worship. When I say lifestyle of worship, not siya kumakanta, okay? The lifestyle of worship is offering his body as a living sacrifice for the kingdom of God. Number four, for those of us who are in the book of John, uh, his or her uh, natural tendency is to evangelize, to share the good news. There's a problem for a person who says, Christiano ako, na born again ako, and yet does not put any effort to share the gospel with other people. If you truly understand that people who don't have Christ is going to hell, then why is it not a priority in his life? Baka hindi niya talaga naintindihan. See? That's why Paul says, uh, Corinthians, check and see if you are truly in the faith. Double check mo. Triple check mo. Now, sa atin, sa mga congregants natin, sa mga nag ng Bible study natin, double check it. Triple check it. Ask questions. No? What does it mean Sir to Mike, be saved? Oh. Yes, Ray. Interruption lang. Sabi mo na, nasabi mo na kasi na yung mga nag ng Bible study, check daw. So, unahin ko muna si Kuya Dan. Kuya Dan, check daw kung totoo ka. Na Christian. <laughs> Ako, si Titing, si Titing, si Totoo ba ito si Titing? <laughs> Ako ba'y <may> tunay? <laughs> you know kasi, Ray, ang totoo lang, we can fool other people. Okay? Pwede natin lukuhin ng ibang tao. Eh. Kaya when Paul says, check and see if you are truly in the faith. Because in the end, only I am responsible to really check myself if I'm truly in the faith. Kasi pwede ako magpeke eh. Tata yung, you know, by nature, We are sinful people. Pwede tayo magpeke. Ang daming peke. Peking Kristiyano, peking, peking prophet, false prophets, peking pastor, peking Bible teacher. Ang daming peke. Plastic. Peking duck na ako yan. Ano no? Peking duck. Peking duck? <laughs> ah, peke, ah, peking duck. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ako ako. Ah, peking duck. <laughs> Manok pala yun. Manok, hindi pala duck. Peking duck. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, and in this context right now, sa Romans 8, if you are truly in Christ, okay, ito pa another, another, another gauge that we know that we are truly in Christ. That when trouble or persecution or suffering happens in your life, you draw closer to God. You don't run away from God. That's another indication that we are truly in Christ. Okay. So praise God for problems. Okay. Kuya Mike, paano daw pag yung mukha mo ang problem sa ating Kuya Dan? Well, look forward when we are <laughs> having our glorified body. Okay. So uh, on that day, we will all be perfect. So temporary lang yan, kahit pinakapangit ng tao ngayon. You know, that's temporary. Doesn't matter. Whatever our condition is, whether it be physical deform- deformity or financial deformity, relational issues, it doesn't matter. All of these are temporary. Kaya, kaya pa ni Paul, in this present and short period of time of suffering, may exit lang. For light, for light and momentary troubles. For, yeah, light and momentary troubles. Sandali lang to. What is 100 years with a you know with an ugly face? 100 years lang yan eh. Oh, si Bobuy nga kaya niya eh. Tama ka so ang ganyan, bantay ka din si Mike. Nakapag-asawa pa nga eh. <laughs> okay. So again, uh, Ray, I think ano po ya Rico? Ha? Ano si Rico? May tinatapos si Rico? Okay. May ganun talaga, sabi niya. 
may ano may ganun talaga but Aha. how will you ask ano yun anong uh, anong question anong context doon oh anong context na may ganun talaga may, may pangit talaga anong <laughs> siguro yung question yeah. niya kuya Ray <laughs> Ay, uh, uh, yung question ko ba yung ito sa first one. 'Di ba you you pronounce the word conquer as Nike, but in in the translation I got is Nik Nikau how do you Yeah, know? that's the Greek Nikau. Uh correct, Nikau. Uh, Nikau is the root word, pero that is also the root word where we get the word Nike to become I victorious. See. Okay, uh-huh. to become victorious. Okay. Yeah. But ang pagkasabi doon, we are more than Nikau. Hindi lang tayo victorious. Mas pa tayo sa victorious. Bakit? A person who is victorious is the one who exerted the effort. Okay? Pag ikaw na exert ng effort, nanalo ka, victorious ka. But in this case, it was God who exerted the effort. And yet, we are the one benefiting from it. That is why we are more than conquerors. See? Amazing, no? Grabe. It's all about God. Yeah, it's glorifying God. Yeah. Sabi ni Rico, all about believers daw yung sinasabi niya about believers ba na mayroong believers daw na pwede nating ipeke. Oh, yeah. parang ganyan ta. Oh yeah. Diba? Sa church, maraming peke. Maraming Did you know? <laughs> oh, no kidding, boy. Statistically, uh, sa di ko na nabasa itong magazine to, it's a Christian magazine that uh, after surveying the the outside people, okay? What they think about the people in the church? The majority number one comment is that people in church are hypocrites. Okay? Bakit? Pero kuya, 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 could that be because the, the fact that they, they see still sin in us and they Correct, correct. That, 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 that is true. That is true. But the point is this, because sometimes uh, uh, supposedly we are at least living in this standard and yet our standard in our real life is way below. And secondly, There are many in the churches who are claiming to be in Christ when in reality they are not. That's why from the outside world, ang tingin nila, Kristiyano yun. Pero hindi pala. Kaya they will conclude, hypocrite yan. So it's not just about Christian living a lower standard. But I think more importantly, there are many people in the congregant, in the congregation, who are not in Christ. Yun ang problema. Kasi nga, kasi nga kuya, di ba, with, as Christians, we are not expected to to be perfect. But sabi nga, we are, we are same sinners. So maybe they just expect too much from us that we are, we are, we can no longer sin. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. Um, pero, you know, every, every believer, uh, one of the other uh, gauges to know that you are in Christ is this, is that there is a change in your lifestyle. Okay, may pagbabago. Kung walang pagbabago, there's a big question mark. So, ang walang pagbabago are people who think they are Christians, but they are not. Yun ang problema. Pero the outside world cannot differentiate that. They cannot differentiate. As a matter of fact, many Christian leaders cannot differentiate that. Many pastors, leaders, we always want to presume lahat itong mga tao na to na nag attend talagang children of God. Are you fooling yourself? Okay. That's why sa Book of Romans, that, that, anong laging gamit ni Paul? If, kung, lagi na ginagamit yun, if you're in Christ. Kasi ano siya sabi niya? Because there's a possibility na hindi ka in Christ. Akala mo lang. Akala mo lang. Okay? Yun ang maling akala. Yun ang maling akala. Exactly. Maganda yan. Kanta na yan. Pwede, kantahin mo na. Oh, oh, kanta ba yan? Akala oh. ko. Sa maling, maraming ano ma, matay. Sa maling akala. Yun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very doctrinal yun. Very scriptural. No? Yeah. All right. So Agui. again, ang chapter 8, It's all about the Holy Spirit, the deposit given in every believer for the purpose of helping us in our weakness. Because God knows we are weak because we are still in chapter 7. We are still in, our, in this sinful body. Okay. Any more?
Rick, wala ka natin na type Rick. Ting? Kaya, question yeah. not related to our topic but oh. I was asked earlier kasi with with some with uh, one of the staff ba. Oo. Oh, oh. Sabi kasi niya he, he asked me na is it kuya na not honoring my parents. Now we are called to honor our parents but what if our parents tells me that I should not get baptized. Oh, mm-hmm. So although I have ans- I answered the question but what is the what is your stand on that? Okay, yung yung honor and submit they are all conditional this is not universal that in all things you are to obey a very good example is uh, Matthew uh, sorry Romans ano ba yung government 13 ba yun 13 uh, 13 okay. 13 the government 13, 13. we are to submit to the government but in Romans 13 it says the condition that we submit to them as long as they are in line with the word of god that's why in the book of acts for example Quote, unquote, the government told, told John, Peter to stop preaching about Christ. And then what did they say? Should we obey God or you? And then they continued on preaching. So in that particular situation, they went in contradiction to what the, quote, unquote, the government asked them to do. In the same manner, honoring our father and mother is not in everything. For example, nanay, tatay mo, uh, ano ah? Uh, nakawin natin yung bangko, ha? ikaw yung bantay sa labas. So, will you say, okay, in reference to honoring my father and mother, susundin ko sila. That, that, is, that is foolishness. Okay? Because our ultimate allegiance is God. That's why even Jesus, nung tinawag siya ni, ni Mary tsaka ng mga kapatid niya, kaya pa ng disciples, uh, Jesus, yung nanay mo tsaka mga kapatid mo nandito sa labas, gusto kang kausapin. Anong sabi niya? But who is my mother? Who is my brother and my sister? It is he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So that is our ultimate allegiance. You ba sagot mo, Ray? Yes, pa. Tama. Uh, say, I, I had the same answer. Okay. So at least tama yung sinabi ko. <laughs> yeah. So pero again, gusto ko, gusto mo makita from the scriptures. Ano yung supporting verses mo? Okay? So know all of that. You know? yeah, I, I, did, I did use that verse also. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. Ano pa? Meron pang uh, comment? Okay, sino pa to? Rico. Okay lang. Wala nang tanong. Since the first session, yan ang aking natutunan. Okay? Always the first scripture. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Exactly. Sora Scriptura. Okay? Always. And check everybody. Check your pastor. Check your preacher. Check your Bible study teacher. Okay? The Bereans, check the scriptures and see if what Paul said is true. So, pag nakarinig ka ng mga opinion lang, palagay ko, siguro, sabi nila, sabi ng karamihan, uh, always check on that. Okay? Kaya sabi ni... Uh, ni Dr. ni Boboy kanina. Ah, sabi ni John MacArthur, yung ano doon, yung death doon is physical death. Okay, acceptable, but let's check yung ba talaga. Okay? Confirm it. Confirm. Kaya sino man siya. Maging sino ka man, ha? Hindi ba ako mantan noon? Ray Valera. Oh, Ray Valera. Ray Valera. Maging sino ka man? Ray Pangilan daw. I-double check. <laughs> I-double check kita. Kahit sino ka man. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And pastors should have accountability talaga partners. Din. Exactly. That's why uh, teachers, pastors will be uh, judged judge more strictly. More strictly. Okay. So, ingat tayo sa pagkuturo. So, uh, kaya to whom kaya must is given. Must kaya is siguro given. ayaw ni Kuya Buboy magpastor. Baka matakot siya. Alam na yung majudge. <laughs> well, you, you don't have to be. A, you don't have to have a title of a pastor. The mere fact that you are teaching, you are influencing people, you will be judged accordingly. May title kaman o wala kang title, doesn't matter. Uh, yun ang sagot, Ray. Kaya ko na magturo, makinig na lang ako. <laughs> you will also be judged for being lazy. <laughs> tama tama na lang. <laughs> wala kang lusot, ano? Wala kang lusot, Ray. Wala kang lusot. 
Ah, alam ko na sagot. Oh. Sandali. I-refer kita kay Mike. Oh, di ba? May trabaho pa rin ako din nawa, di ba? <laughs> Mayroon lang akong isang naisip kanina pa. Oh, dalawa sige. na, dalawa so, na, dalawa na. Uh, Iting, dalawa na. <laughs> oh, sige, Ting, ano yun? Oh, kung baga dito lang, especially dito sa More Than Conquerors, ano? Uh, kahit na promise ni Lord na magtatagumpay talaga tayo, talagang dadaan tayo sa masakit na sitwasyon oh, yeah. kung may mga challenges. Pero lalo na yung kasama natin sa church yung nagpapasakit sa atin. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pero na pumasok din sa isip ko yung kanta. Kailangan kantahin itong Ako ang nagwagi. Ayun! <laughs> Kita ko yung talo. Ting. Kaya Mike, mag, magkaraoke yeah, tayo after nito. <laughs> Ting, sino, sino ba yung pinapag-usapan mo? Si Boboy ba yun? Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> goods kami, goods kami lahat. Goods kami lahat. <laughs> yun lang, yun lang. Mga simpleng bagay na ba? Mga yung ina-expect mo na pa, ano sa'yo, tutulong o mapanig o maglalap yeah. sa'yo. Yun pa yung susuway sa'yo. Okay. Yeah. Not, just, not just a church family thing. Even your own physical family. Asawa mo, anak mo, kamag-anak mo. I mean, you'll be surprised. Um, actually, you're not surprised. Okay? Uh, uh, siguro lahat tayo nakadaan na tayo doon. No? Um, we all yeah. have experienced it one way or another. Yes, Dan? Uh, kaya may saying na hero outside, zero inside. Ano-ano? <laughs> <laughs> hero outside, zero inside. Zero outside. Uh, you're experiencing uh, uh, Nike more than conquer ka sa labas. Pero sa loob, you are <laughs> defeated. A hero outside, zero inside. Yeah. Um, but in the end, uh, again, what may, may say, Bible verse ba yun, Mike? May Bible verse ba yun? Na ano? Na, Yung sinabi ni Danny? Zero outside? Uh, hero, hero outside? Oh, zero um, inside. I'm not sure kung meron. Yung uh, yung kay Jesus na uh, there is uh, walang hero in his own country, you know. There's no prophet. There's no prophet. There's no prophet, no prophet in his, own. No in his yeah. own. Yeah, pero not, not not in that sense. Yeah, could be, could be. Yeah. Yun ang malang kamalapit na no. Yun ang pinakamalapit. Uh-huh. Mike, pwede mong tanong? Oo. Uh-huh. Nawala sa topic. Oo, uh-huh. ano? Tanong na ako. Pero it has been hanging aging question. Sa Noah ba? Kay yung the time before Noah, God was so frustrated that he disappointed that he created men. That's why uh-huh. he destroyed. Uh-huh. So nagkamali so in short nagkamali ba si God pag create ng men? Kasi no, again, was... we have to understand about scriptures. Scriptures when God is speaking, oftentimes will give words and uses words that man can understand. Okay? Because God is all-knowing. God is uh, uh, knows the end from the beginning. He created all things. Nothing surprises him. So if we put that verse and say, okay, God, uh, you know, nagsisi siya na ginawa yung tao, that will not make sense. That only reason why it is being said is for us to understand. Just like many of the other parables, like it's a book of John Tayo, I, I am the living water. What do you mean by that? So again, these are just human illustrations for man to understand, to quench the thirst of man, the living water. But there are many other verses then um, that will speak about seemingly parang, you know, doesn't make sense, uh, like, like that particular verse in Noah. Okay. Yeah, maraming parables. Ping, ping. Yeah. yung nag, nagpasakit sa'yo, pwede mo man i-chat dito ang pangalan para pagdasal natin. Oh, i-text mo na lang, i-text. <laughs> <laughs> no, pero we will always have those kinds of things always okay um, it could be your pastor it could be a, a, a deacon an elder it could be anybody it could be a fellow member lagi meron ganyan uh, nag-attend ng church yung pala dati may utang sa'yo hindi pa nagubayad tapos ngayon nag-attend sa church anong gawin mo ngayon uh, there are many different scenarios but how you respond um, you know will depend on will it make you more like Christ or not. Yun lang naman dalawang option eh. Okay? 